friends forever, that's what we are. Through the thick and the thin, we're friendship stars. We're banger main buddies from the days of old. We laugh, cry, and hug, friendship solid gold. My soul code, whatever started a year ago. We share our stories, and your stories were told. 80s, 90s, memories that give us glee. And on the block, party shows, and KOTB. Now our friendship circle has grown by far. Hashtag friends forever, that's what we all are. Boom! And if you don't know, now you know. My soul called whatever for life. Hashtag MSCW. Hashtag friends forever. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 the test, test. You need to get turned up. Turnt. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Test, 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 to test, test. Much better. Because I always have to, like, turn you up manually on... It's weird, because we're at the same. Yeah. I guess I just have a louder voice, or maybe it's because I'm talking into the microphone differently. I don't know. I don't know. Weird. So, about three weeks ago... No. No. In July... <laughs> yeah. We, rec- we did something that we never thought w- we would do. And we... Like, talked about this as, like, a pipe dream? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, a, a while ago, like, back in the beginning. Yeah. And oh, I don't know that yeah. we put it on the podcast or not, but but Nikki and I talked about it. I'm pretty sure we did, because I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. Because people reached out, and they were like, I know who you're talking about. So, we had put it out in the universe. We did. And guess what? It totally happened. It sure did. And we have that episode for you here now. Right now. So... And this is an episode with Shane McDermott. So Shane McDermott was on Swan's Crossing. He was on... Airborne. Airborne. The movie. The movie. He was on All My Children. hmm And he was also in The Babysitter's Club. Yes. And he also did a lot of commercials, we found. We yeah. We found out a lot of stuff about him. We did. It was a really great conversation. It was amazing. It and was exactly how we wanted it to be. So oh, my we'll gosh. have commentary after you guys listen to the episode. So listen through, and then you'll hear our conversation, and then Brooke and I are going to break it down. So here it is. Here it is. Are you ready? Wait a minute. Wait, but wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. It's him, it's him, it's him, it's him. Do I answer it? I. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Answer it. Hello. Hey. hey. Hi. How are you oh, doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good. Did I call too early? No. No. no this you're is perfect. great. This you're is perfect. great, great, great. Good. I'm just, I'm not What's gonna up, lie, guys? I'm so nervous. <laughs> I am Me like, too. Oh my goodness, I am, I don't even know. No, this is great, guys. Thank you so much for the, uh, for the invite. I'm, I'm excited. This is, this is great. So, it's been a while since I've talked about uh, Airborne and Swans Crossing and, you know, all that stuff. So, uh, so I'm excited. Thank you very much for the invite. Looking forward to it. Oh, okay. That makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm Brooke. And Nikki, I'm Nikki. And Nikki's the one talking. But we are so excited to have you. Thank you so, 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 so much. Never and in a million years. Like, <laughs> seriously. For real. But <laughs> I know. Like, Nikki has a little story for you. But we'll yeah. we'll get into it. But just to, like, recap some things. Yeah. Then Nikki has a little story for you. And we can kind of get right into it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to tell that story. <laughs> when, I, when I was younger, I used uh-huh. to write you letters. I wonder if I still have them. I don't I think you do. No, it's, <laughs> you have to hear the story. It's adorable. Okay. It now really now me. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing. No, it's really not for embarrassing. Me. But for it's me. maybe for you, but it's yeah. fun. So, and I also have, I don't know if you can see that, but I have an airborne Oh, yeah. Can right you there. see the video? Okay. So that is yeah. an airborne poster right there. <laughs> Is it the one in the the second one down? Yes, right okay. there. Okay, there got it, it, got it. Yep. Oh, there it is. Okay, <laughs> yes. the big one. So you got the big one. I did. Okay. Actually, I, I have that poster uh, somewhere hidden in my office. Oh, no. <laughs> hidden? Yeah, yeah. At one point, you know, it's just, if it was a little bit smaller, I would hang it on the wall. So, uh, yeah. uh, but uh, I know that poster well. 
So yeah, thank you very much. That's that's very flattering. Airborne was a was a great film. So I didn't have it when I was younger, so I had to get it when I was older. So there it is. <laughs> well, good. So do you want to start? Yeah, let's start. Okay. okay. All right. So we're ready to intro. I think so. All right. Let's All right. Do it. Here we go. Here we go. Julie's intro. This is Brooke. And this is Nikki. And this is Shane McDermott. Oh and this is <laughs> and this is my so called whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry Ooh. that I'm like totally I told you. I told I know. you. I told you. You did. I did, and I we have to be honest. We started talking about you when we first started our podcast one year ago. So like in the early episodes, Brooke was talking and she was you were asking we were talking about like people we had a crush on when we were younger. And um, she was like, Nikki, what was that show that you and I used to watch together? And I'm like, immediately, I said, Swan's Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> so we started talking about you. And, you know, we put the word out that we wanted to have you on a podcast episode, like just thinking it was like, put it out into the it was universe. a long shot. Yeah, never thought it would ever happen. And oh my gosh, you're here right now. This is so amazing. Uh, this, this is really wonderful. I, I, I'm, I'm very, very honored uh, to, to be here. This oh, is, it's wonderful talking about Swans Crossing and, and Airborne and, and all the, the great stuff that uh, I was lucky enough to be a part of. So thank you. That's cool. Uh, very much. I'm, I'm excited to be here. I am. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> so do we want to, um, why don't we hear your story, Nikki? Okay. I mean, yeah. our our listeners have heard this story. They have. Shane hasn't heard this story. No. So this is this is a good one to tell. Okay. <laughs> so um, I started watching Swans Crossing. Like it wasn't. I didn't start from the beginning. Um, mm-hmm. I got into it into the middle, and immediately I'd never. I'd only written one other like celebrity ever. And that was Joe McIntyre. And in the back of the magazines, they'd have the address, like the PO box, you could write to them and, Mm -hmm. and, and send them a letter. But I, I knew what your name was, but I couldn't find you in the back of the magazines. So you were on Fox, um, the Fox network. Um, and so I just automatically thought, well, if maybe I write my letters in care of Luke Perry, it will automatically get to Shane McDermott. So I used to write you letters in care of Luke Perry. Okay. So I don't think you ever got them, but Luke Perry. No, no, that's, that's what I was saying. Uh, you know, I, I remember Swan's Crossing. We used to get a lot of fan mail. I think that Swan Crossing, we had more fan mail in Swan's Crossing than, you know, Airborne or any of that. And, you know, that was at the time – I mean, it was it was pretty exciting to get fan mail. I mean, yeah. get letters, you know, I mean, just in stacks of letters. Uh, so I, I remember that. I, and actually, I kept uh, a good deal of them. That's amazing. <laughs> just because, I mean, it's... I it's yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it really is. Uh, it, it, it was very exciting to get, uh, to get uh, the fan mail. And, and I loved it. I loved reading them. Uh, and I did my best to, to write back. I, I don't. I guess I maybe I didn't get back to you. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. So I'm I'm so sorry for that. I will make up for that. I promise. <laughs> no, I. It was just insane because, I I like I I wrote quite a few. I believe <laughs> and, it. You're very so then I definitely have one. <laughs> and well, I I them. always wrote them to Luke Perry. So I'm sure I don't think you ever got them, but he yeah, it, it, it was amazing. It was I can remember doing that and like taking the time and writing them. And and my parents are like, I don't think that's going to get to him, though. Like they told like they were like informing. Me. And right. I said, no, I think I think it will. I just think because make he's sure on the same network it. doesn't yes. mean <laughs> where, where, where were you? Where were uh, where did you grow up? Uh, Bangor, Maine. Okay, got it. That's where got we it. are now. Okay. So okay. Um, actually, I would I would love to be in Maine right now. Texas is a little hot. So, I'll bet it uh, is. We're having some heat right now because we don't have um, air conditioning because we don't really need it. So, you don't need it. Yeah, we've got fans going in here, but it's been pretty hot lately. So it has. It's been like super hot, like really humid. We, we're like ninety percent humidity. So it uh, when that when it yeah, gets hot. hot. 
Yeah. yeah. But Maine is beautiful. I, I love Maine. Well, you can come up anytime Any, and we'll show anytime. you around. <laughs> anytime. Okay. I may take you up on that, especially hey. in August and September. I mean, it's, it's, it's it beautiful. can be very difficult in, uh, in Texas. Talk about humidity. We're, we're right on the Gulf. Uh, so, uh, so it's, it's very humid, but in the winters, it's wonderful. So yes, and see, by, that's the opposite for us. Like August and September are like our highest tourist months, really. Right, and and gorgeous. Yep. And yep. winter is terrible. Yeah, never come here and in, in unless like you January. like to ski. Unless you like to ski and do like winter stuff. Right. <laughs> I do like to ski. I do. Actually, I learned how to ski on the East Coast. So uh, oh. uh, you know, I grew up in New York. So uh, we used to go skiing all the time. So. That's awesome. Nice. That is awesome. And you're pretty good at rollerblading, too. I, I have my moments, or I had my moments. <laughs> it's been a little time since I've been uh, been on the skates. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I would imagine it's like riding a bike. You don't, you don't ever lose it. So. Right. 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 So when did you decide, when did you start deciding as a child that you wanted to be an actor? Did you decide or like, were, did your mom get you interested in it or your dad or? No, I was, uh, I was, I was a pretty motivated kid. Uh, so when I was, when I was young, um, uh, we, uh, we were actually living in Texas at the time in Houston. Uh, and I was a gymnast, uh, young gymnast, uh, uh, uh very, very involved. I mean, I'd be in practice every day. And I think it started, I think it all started out one day I was, I got into a fight with my coach. Uh, and my coach was, you know, I wasn't doing what he was telling me to. And, uh, and he kicked me out. And, uh, and so, you know, and I, I was young. I, I think I was maybe 12 years old. So I was, I was pretty young. Uh, and uh, he kicked me out and told me I could not come back to class all week. Uh, and uh, I, I remember I was sitting around watching TV. And uh, I, I don't know if you guys remember Faces International. It was a modeling book, I guess. Um, they used to uh, they used to take photos and put them in this book, and you know they would promote it in these commercials. You know, get famous. You know, put your picture in these yes. books. Yes, yes. So, and so I, I was bored one day, and I called them up and set up an appointment uh, to uh, get my photos taken, or at least come in and meet them. And uh, you know, I was pretty young, so as soon as I got off the phone, they called the house back. And my mother picked up the phone uh, and they said, you know, did you know your son set this, this, this appointment to, to get photos taken? And uh, she said, no, I had no idea. And the deal that she made with me is that we, we could go and do it as long as my sister uh, came along. And, uh, and I said, yeah, let's do it. So we went there and uh, uh, they set us up with a photographer and the photos just turned out really good. Uh, and uh, at that point, we sent, I think it was my father, uh, I sent some of the photos up to Ford Modeling. Um, and I was just at a, an age where they needed young models. And so actually, I started not in acting, I started modeling. Oh, so as a, oh as wow. a child model. Uh, and they flew me up to New York for the summer. And it was my first summer in New York, which I loved. Uh, you know, I, I, I love New York. It's a wonderful city. So, uh, and, uh, and then... And it, it, it all started from there. So. What was your first, um, what did, like, what did you do? Like, what, what was did you your first for? job? Yeah, what was your first job? I think it was for Izod Clothes. Uh, so it was a, it was a really big campaign. They brought in, um, you know, when they would have the, you know, like 20 different kids all in bright colors, you know, on different like, sailboats and stuff like that. <laughs> Izod Kids. Uh, and it was, uh, I, and I remember it because I was, so amazed that you could that you that I that I was allowed to kind of do this, you know. You you, you go and they had food trucks set up and uh, you know it was it was really it was a lot of fun. Uh, and so I remember doing the shoot, and so I think it was my mother who you know was on set with me or not set or um, on whatever you call that, um, you know, on site. And uh, and uh, and we just it, it, and it really took off from there. I, that was the the the, lo the first campaign I did was was pretty big, and then I started doing a lot of small stuff. So uh, in New York, they did a lot of catalog work. So I would spend a good majority of my day all summer going from catalog shoot to catalog shoot. Uh, I used to do uh, book covers. Uh, so back, I, I'm sure they still do it, but they would take a photo of somebody for a book cover, uh, and then an artist would draw it. So there were a bunch of books out there. I, I think I have a couple that you know it's cool. it's a it's a drawing, but it's you know my face. So uh, so I do a lot of that stuff. I do a lot of the 
uh, just a lot of print stuff and you know really neat shoots go out to Jones Beach and shoot on the beach and uh, it was it was a great summer I mean I had a blast that's that's so that's so cool that's that book thing is really cool it is and that's like I've never heard that before like he called and he got it started he was the one that yeah you know what I mean because usually it's like the parents they they'll bring or or but you like made the phone call and then yeah my <laughs> yeah my mother mother and father were not really stage uh, I mean they they really took a back seat to the whole thing and then it just kind of it unfolded I mean it just it had a kind of a life of its own all the way up through airborne you know it just it just started rolling kind of didn't stop so yeah I mean that that's a huge movie like that yeah. was a huge part that of was- our childhood. Huge. Yeah. I can't even tell you, you how many times I saw that. You made me want a rollerblade. I was like, I'm going to totally do this. I that, wasn't very good at it. <laughs> that's what it's all about. I, that, 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 that makes me feel so good when it says, when you say, made you want a rollerblade. It did. Exactly it should have done. So. When you were, oh, there you are. Oh, hey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we can see you now. Oh, where did he go? Oh, your husband? No, you. Oh, We couldn't okay. see you before. Oh, really? Did... Okay. Oh, there he is. Oh, my gosh. This is crazy. Now I'm really nervous. <laughs> so, I was wondering if you could see me. I can see you guys. So. No, we can see you now. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. <clears throat> I know it's like it's like a it looks different than usual, but whatever. It's yeah, there. hey, cool. we'll take it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, was it Babysitters Club? Was that the first TV thing that you did, or was it uh, um, Swans Crossing? Uh, Babysitters Club was before Swans Crossing, but but actually, it started with um, started with commercials. Uh, oh. So, you know, the one thing about being a, a kid model, uh, it's, uh, I guess, being a model in general uh, is uh, sizes. You have to be the right size to fit the clothes. And when you're not the right size, you don't get any work. <laughs> so uh, that pretty much happens. You know, as I, I think I, I did the kid modeling for, I don't know, maybe three years. Uh, we moved up to New York and I was full time. I mean, it was, you know, I'd go to school and then after school, I'd just work and work and work. Uh, and it, it was great, uh, but one day I just grew too uh, too tall, and the phone stopped ringing. And uh, so the agent at the time said, "You know, Shane, you should you should try acting." Uh, and I had started uh, doing or auditioning for commercials, and it was really commercials that got me into uh, the acting. So I think my first commercial was Ethan Allen Furniture, oh, hey. which was another you know large group of kids. Uh, dancing on the furniture, and you know, it was, it was actually a lot of fun. It was a, it was a great, great commercial, um, and a lot of fun to do. Uh, and then, and then after that, I was hooked. I mean, once you do a commercial like that, it was it was acting all the way, uh, and you know, and that's what I did. Uh, Ethan Allen Furniture, Stovetop Stuffing, uh, Drug Free America, uh, and I think I did five or six commercials before I booked Babysitter Club. Oh, so. Wow, we we'll have to find those. We do have to find yeah, those. Yeah, we'll, we'll find them. <laughs> and, and in those commercials, I look really young. I, mean, like, <laughs> I look back and I'm just like, wow. I mean, you're just, you're, you're such a little, little kid, little kid. So just to show you how old I have, I have all those commercials on like VHS. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, it's just, um, it was a while ago. So, but good memories. I, you know, I haven't, I haven't talked about the commercials in a long time. Stove Top Stuffing and Drug Free America were fun to do too so uh in drug free america were you what was the commercial about i'm trying to see if i remember it well the the commercial opens up in a uh like nightclub you know of course i was i think i was 12 at the time 12 or 13 you know so i was i was pretty young but it was kind of like a nightclub dance party atmosphere uh and uh you know i was a little kid kind of walking through the crowd uh looking cool (laughs) <laughs> and uh, walked up. I think there was. I think at one point there was like a girl in the corner. And she looked at me, and I kind of looked over at her. Uh, and then somebody passes me a joint, uh, and I, and I say, no, no. It's kind of you know. So it was, it was kind of like you can be you can be cool and not do drugs. Uh, you know. So it was, it was, I feel like I remember this I commercial. Remember this, like you're saying it. I can see it. As soon as you said the nightclub, like a like a dance said, type of said, nightclub no. setting. Yeah, like I said, no. I, I feel like, like I remember it. We're gonna so find this. Yes. Yeah, it played all the time. I mean, it was. I think those those you kind of do them. You know, they're they're done. They're, there's you don't get really paid for it. I think you just kind of volunteer to kind of do the work, or it's limited pay uh, because it's you know good service. And, sure. So, uh, and so they play it a 
lot. And it was just, it was actually the first time that the commercial, one of my commercials was just played over and over and over and over again. Uh, uh, a little bit like Airborne. Airborne has kind of had uh, longevity. So, uh, so and sure I guess the, the, the commercial had it too. I mean, it, it played even when I was 20, I remember seeing it going, wow, it's still playing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, I, I do remember that commercial, and it did play all the time. Yes. Especially, like, during, like, on channels and, and during, um, like, viewing times, I think, probably when kids like us were watching. Yeah. Because we were, like, that our, that target audience. And then we were, I'm, like... And I saw it a lot. I'm not going to do drugs. I'm going to be cool. Yeah. I'm going to be cool That's like that I'm guy. Do. Yeah. Like Shane. <laughs> like Dermot. The one I used to write letters to. <laughs> In care of Luke Perry. <laughs> Did you guys see Babysitter's Club? Not to, not to. We used to watch Babysitter's Club. I loved Babysitter's Club. We, HBO s- Babysitter's Club. Right, HBO Babysitter's Club. That one, not the movie. Right, the movie was okay, but we were HBO Babysitter's Club, which that's what you would be on. Yeah. Right. Right. And I, I must like, remember I, the episode. I remember, like, I remember seeing you on there. Mm-hmm. Because here's the thing, like when I was that age, yeah. like 12, 13, you know, when these things were coming out mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever, I think I was 13 when Airborne came out. I was like, oh, that's the same guy that was in the, ep- the those episodes of Babysitter's Club. Mm-hmm. So I always like knew you that as, oh, yeah, that's the guy that was on Babysitter's Club. Mm-hmm. And we looked for episodes. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to find. I have a VHS of that too, so uh, yeah. maybe I'll I'll figure out some way to send it. Although the Babysitters Club that I did was was kind of a it was a limited part, but it was the first time I ever did anything that was actually I think they shot it on film. Uh, so it was my first experience being on a uh, kind of a set, oh, wow. know, outdoor set, which was lovely. You know, uh, uh, shooting outside and with cameras and lights, it's uh, it's a really amazing experience. So. That's, That's so cool. neat, and that. Again, another babysitters club for us was huge. Like huge. It's like you grew up with us. Yeah. Because I mean, us. we're similar ages, so I mean it was right. like you know, babysitters club, then Swan's Crossing, then Airborne. Absolutely. You and know so and here we are. And here we are. So I have a question. Mm-hmm. This and I like this I just kind of thought of actually when you mentioned the book. So I feel like I recognize your face from a Babysitter's Club book, but I can't tell if I'm like putting it in there because you were on the show or if you, I I may, it may be because as I told you, I mean, I did, I mean, I would do a book cover once a week. I would do a book cover. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. Which I love love because I, maybe that was my first uh, real experience, you know, with artists because the artists were always in the room. Um, the illustrators, I guess, you know, they were always in the room. So it was always kind of interesting talking to them. Uh, so, uh, but I, I may have been. Now I feel like I'm going to have to go back through. Oh, fine. Because, like, for real, I really think, I really, really. You have all of them, so. Right. <laughs> Brooke has all of them. Somewhere. In a tote, somewhere. My, my nieces are reading the Babysitter's uh, Club books right now, so. They're they're really good books they for, for yeah, right. you know, kids. I would yeah. just collect them. You didn't read them? Oh, when I would get a new Babysitter's Club book, I was up all night with a flashlight. I like to watch the show. I, I read some of them. Yeah. Oh, like, I read so the good. one with, that introduced Dawn. Like, I remember that one. But I I was a collector. I think that was number seven. Was <laughs> Brooke. <laughs> She's got a thing. So, um, anyway, sorry. I just had to ask. I didn't know if you knew specifically if, if so or not. No, I'm going yeah, to thumb through. Specifically. I can't wait to see it because I've been I've been looking for it. I'm going to find something. OK. OK. So I'm glad that you brought up Babysitter's Club because, again, and if anybody out there has a digital copy, feel free to send it to us. Or if you want to, like, scour the Internet. Yeah. Hey, please. Yeah. Please do. Please. I would love if you found one. I would, I would love a copy. Oh, that yeah. would be great. See, Shane wants a copy, so you got to find it. Right. <laughs> People. It's work. That's right. <laughs> Actually, this is a this is a really good segue because speaking of our community, mm-hmm. our friend Heather, we kind of bonded. I um I've 
I've only met her in person once and it's when I went to LA for a day. I like went to this concert just for a day and she ended up coming up and introducing herself. And she's like, I love Swans Crossing too. And so (laughs) we started talking about our, our love for Swans Crossing and she made it her personal mission to get your attention and tell you that we wanted to have you on the episode and you happened to respond to her comment. I was like, oh my gosh, she's responding. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, well, Heather, thank you very much. And I think this is great. So, uh, so, and you said Heather had a question, right? She, she does. Like, it's oh, an audio uh, question. So we're going to play the audio. Yes. So, so Heather was the one who reached out to me on Instagram, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, she was. And by the way, I love Instagram. I post on Instagram quite a bit. Nikki's really good at it. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> you you take some really great pictures. Are you a photographer as well? No, way, I love photography. I mean, I, but I'm definitely not not a photographer. But I tell you, one day I would love to really get into it. I I love taking photos and I love painting them. Actually, one of the reasons how I kind of got into the photography was was through the art. You know, it gives me material to paint. So, well, both your painting the these are are taken in a very artistic way. You've taken time for those shots. Like they're the perfect shot. So just to put that out there, not that I'm a photographer, (laughs) but (laughs) no, but when something's good, it's good. Right. And I enjoy photography. Like I enjoy other people. I am not a photographer, but I enjoy other people's. I enjoy the photography on on Instagram and just looking through others. Uh, I mean, it's, there's a lot, there's a lot of inspiration that you get from, from looking at other people's photos. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I just, I love it. And it also, you get to travel the world, uh, you know, true through your phone a little bit, but still you get to see some amazing places. Isn't that great? Like places you didn't even know existed. All right. Here is Heather's question. Hey Brooke. Hey Nikki. How's it going? Just hanging at the beach in Southern California. And I wanted to thank you so much for creating this amazing podcast and allowing me to be part of it. I heard you have a very special guest on the show today. Hey, Shane, this is Heather, Sidbooth2000 on Instagram. I am a huge fan of your work as both an actor and an artist. I actually have a print of your peacock painting hanging in my home. I also want to tell you how much I love, love, love Airborne, All My Children, and the best show of all time, Swan's Crossing. Which brings me to my question for you. What are some of your favorite memories filming Swan's Crossing and working with such an amazing cast? That's a, that's a great question because there are so many great memories. And I, I would say probably the most vivid memories that I have were when we, we we did the pilot, and it was it was done in Miami. Uh, so we uh, they flew us into Miami, and it was the first time I met the cast. Which I agree with you. I mean, that cast was amazing. It was wonderful working with Sarah and Brittany and, and just everybody on the cast. And Alex, I, Alex Tanak and I are still very good friends. Uh, I mean, we've been lifelong friends and so forth. So, but my I would say my best memories almost all took place in Miami. Uh, I'd never been to Miami before, and I love Miami. Uh, so I, I got into uh, I got into the place. They set us up at a beautiful hotel, and it was almost as magical. I mean, the weather was beautiful. You know, I was telling you about being on set where you're you're outdoors and they have lights set up and cameras, and that was really the first time that I was fully involved in production. So it was. Just memory after memory you know, in Miami. So I would say that that's probably my fondest memories were there, you know, in, in Miami. We finished up shooting Swans Crossing. Most of the episodes were shot in Queens. So after we did the pilot and got picked up, uh, we ended up moving to New York. Wow. Uh, Kaufman Astoria Studios. And Kaufman Astoria Studios is, is, is really great. It's in, it's in uh, Astoria, Queens. You know, I love Queens. You know, great food. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it really is get a good feel for what New York is. I would say, like, one of the great memories that I had there, The Age of Innocence, I think, was a film that had been shot uh, in Kaufman Astoria Studios. And we kind of, we were there all the time. Uh, so we were, kind of had the run of the studio. And I remember, it was the first time I ever met Daniel Day-Lewis, I think, 
was was there one day. And now, I mean, just all these famous people would come in, uh, and we were kind of kids, just you know, running around the studio. So they always they always thought it was kind of interesting uh, that you know we could get into all the different sets. And Agent Innocence, we uh, not so much snuck into, but we uh, we made it on set one day. That was a great experience. I mean, they were just it was many years ago, so it's kind of hard to uh, uh, to, to remember them all. So that's awesome. That is. How long from when you shot the pilot to when you started? you ended filming the first season or the only season, unfortunately. Um, how long uh, was that? Uh, three months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's fast. Yeah. It was really fast. We were doing an episode a day. So, uh, uh when you end up doing soaps are kind of the same way, uh, that, you know, you just, you, you, you crank out a, a lot of material, uh, in a short period of time. So we would, we were on set early, uh, we'd get there at six in the morning and we wouldn't leave until late in the evening. But yeah, it was three months and we did 65 episodes in three months. That's a lot. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. That's wild. <laughs> wow. Uh, and actually there was another, there was another memory, which I just thought, I mean, it's been years. So, so I'm, I'm trying to go through all those memories, but it was the, I remember one day, uh, they told us we were going to do a publicity event. Um, and, uh, you know, you know, I'd never really done publicity before, uh, and they kind of rounded all the kids up, and and uh, we, you know, they hired us a limo, two limos. So oh. the the girls were in one car, the guys were in another car, and they brought us to Planet Hollywood. I remember those pictures. I had that in my room. <laughs> Not to be weird, sorry. <laughs> it was an amazing uh, uh, moment for us because I, I was 15 at the time. I was I was pretty young, and I just remember. You know, I hadn't ridden in that many limos. So, you know, getting in the limos with very good friends of yours, I mean, we were we were excited just to be in the car. Uh, and then we pull up in front of Planet Hollywood, and there were people everywhere. I mean, it was just like, it was packed. I mean, it was just cameras were going off everywhere. There were, there were fans everywhere. And I think at that time, we hadn't realized the, the, the effect that Swans Crossing had made uh, we just did, I, at that time I just didn't realize that people were watching it as much as they were, and so we opened you know they opened up the door, and I think and I was shocked I was shocked at how much interest uh, you know Swans Crossing had, and then the next three hours while we were at Planet Hollywood it was a blur of like flash bulbs and and just meeting people, uh, and I would say that that was definitely a highlight. I, there was even one point where. Uh, um, Brittany and Sarah and I had all gotten in um, the Terminator motorcycle, and they were they were taking photos, and and that was that was a really really nice moment. So uh, I, I enjoyed that. That's so cool. That's cool. I remember those I had, pictures. I had the picture in my room. Yeah, the, I remember that. The one was you and Brittany Daniels. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, Sarah Michelle Geller. Yeah, I had that because that was like. I feel like you had it in your magazine and you were like, look what I found. And then you gave me the picture. It was definitely from a magazine. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, thank you. Probably 16. Probably. I had or, a subscription. Or bop. You may have gotten the occasional bop. Magazine. The occasional bop at the grocery store. That is true. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is awesome. Like, I, yeah. I can't imagine how it must have been going from, you know, I mean, you're still seen, but then like all of a sudden it's like, woo. All these people. It's almost a little bit uh, overwhelming. I mean, it, it was it was uh, it was impressive. Uh, you know, in New York, and I think it only showed in certain certain areas uh, along the East Coast. I think it was just kind of an East Coast show. Uh, but uh, the reception that we had was wonderful. And you know, the show was a really great show. The developers were great writers. And even to the today, I mean, I, I have, you know, of course, seen all the episodes and I, I know them pretty well. It's been a while since I watched them. It was a very original show. And I still to this day, I, I, I look back on it, on the creativity of the directors and, and the creators. And I'm pretty impressed. I think for uh, for me, I grew up watching soap operas with my... My mm-hmm. grandmother. Which ones? It was not all my children, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was The Young and the Restless and uh-huh. Guiding Light. Those were the two that my grandmother always watched. My mother raised me in a general hospital and one life to live. So That was Brooke. That was me. She's it actually was named all my after child- you were named I'm named after, after Brooke. Okay. So <laughs> my brother is Bo. <laughs> so <laughs> it was all my children, one life to live, general hospital. 
Like, my mom is diehard. That's really cool. I yeah. My mom never watched soap operas. Yeah. Um, so my grandmother, it was always like, oh, we got to I got to watch my program. You know, that's what she call it. <laughs> and this was my soap opera. Like, yeah. I had my own that talked to me and dealt with the kind of things that like were important to me. And for them to, to understand you. that. Like, I think that's a huge thing because us yeah. watching it now as we're older. But here's the thing. Like, it's not meant for me at this age. It was meant for me back then. And at that time, it spoke to me. Right. Yeah. I, I got into all kinds of different music because of the music that was played on the show. Like, mm-hmm. I started really liking Tears for Fears because yes. you remember yes. <laughs> and just all kinds of different music. And it just it introduced me to so many different things. And it was like my show. Right. Like it was the show that my parents, they knew when it was on. Mm -hmm. I got to, I got the TV. That was important. That is important. (laughs) Do you remember what time it came on? For us, it was, I want to say 530. Yeah. I thought it was a really good time for getting out of school. Uh, The kids would watch it. Or was it uh, somehow something, it had been changed to early morning. I think that that may have been. It was years ago, so... I think yeah. for us, maybe it started off as early morning, and then okay. it went to... Um, because when I started watching it, it was always in the evening, because I would I would call Brooke afterwards, I can remember, <laughs> and I'd be like, did you watch it? So let's talk about it. <laughs> and we'd have our own, like... It was like a... Not a book club, but it was like Swan's Crossing Club. Yeah, we'd talk about the show. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So, do you remember your audition like do you remember when you when you heard about swan's crossing and and you knew that you wanted to do this well i you know at the time i was auditioning a lot uh so uh you know and i wanted to i wanted to work so i wanted to do them all and i and i do remember getting the script and you know it's funny whenever you get uh whenever you end up every time i've ever booked a show there's always something kind of a spontaneous that kind of happens. And I, I think the first time, uh, the first time I auditioned for it, I was on videotape. And somehow, whenever I was reading, I, you know, I, I tend to mess up lines a lot. And sometimes it goes well, and sometimes it, it doesn't. Uh, but in this case, uh, it actually it went pretty well. Uh, and, and I think that the producers, whenever they watched it, they thought that it, you know, I, well, for better or worse, that, you know, I, 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 I could do Garrett Booth. And, and so they, uh, I, I don't actually remember going in and meeting with the producers because once again, that was, that was a while ago. Uh, but I do remember being on video camera for it. That's cool. That's so what would Garrett be up to today? <laughs> <laughs> Hypothetically speaking. Trouble. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what, that's what Garrett was all about. He so. was, but, yeah. but sometimes it was unfortunate circumstances. Yes, you know. Yes. Well, well, but that's the best. That's the best uh, <laughs> character to play in soaps. You know, the guy who's trouble, but but he's actually a nice guy deep down inside. So, right. uh, so that's why Gary Booth was so great. I mean, he was uh, he's definitely the, uh, the the you know soap operas that he was the type of character you wanted to play. And I enjoyed I enjoyed Gary Booth and and especially the relationship between Gary Booth and Sydney. And uh, I, I really I found the show very interesting so uh was very 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 happy to have been a part of part of it because it it has kind of uh it's become kind of a cult classic uh which i just love you know i love when uh shows are done well and uh they they can last through the years Uh, so there's a lot of people even today that will not a lot of people, a lot less these days, but uh, they will approach me and talk about Swans Crossing, so uh, so it's nice. Our community is made up of a lot of Swans Crossing fans. Yeah, hey, I will I'm say. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of Swans Crossing. Uh, you know, I, I, so. and, and that was what was funny is I would talk to some people and I would say, oh, I used to love the show. And, you know, it was like 50%. Um, most of the time, the people I talked to that didn't know, they were like, why did I not watch that show? Like, where was that show? I right. love that show. Like, I would have loved that show. Because at the time, like, 90210 was mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. But it yeah. was older. Like, mm-hmm. it was, like, dealing with a lot of older stuff than mm-hmm. we were ready for yet. And we still of, watched it. We still watched it. But we wanted our own our own thing. So yeah. we did that for us. So here's the question. 
Once and for all, <laughs> Sydney or Mila? Question, Sydney or Mila? Yes, if you had, if, if Garrett had to choose. Sorry, uh, Mila and Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> I'm celebrating. That was what I was hoping the answer would be. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, no, I, I always loved that uh, the relationship that Garrett Booth and uh, Sydney had. I always thought it was, uh, uh, it was, um, it was it was it was interesting. Of course, you know, I was pretty young at the time. So, uh, uh, but you know, I was I was felt that uh, Sarah and I definitely had a good uh, uh, rapport on camera, and uh, you know, I was always just kind of uh, loved Sydney. So I loved that relationship. It was like Romeo and Juliet. They were like there you go. You yeah. know, they were meant to be together, made for each other. They were, but you know, their parents had to get involved. Mm-hmm. So those darn parents. So the last episode has always left us kind of, I can remember <laughs> when, the, when I can, I can remember when it went to like to be continued and yeah. then I looking for it and just feeling so lost. Like I need to know what happened. Like what happened? Like, so if you could write the last episode, how do you think it would would end? You know, honestly, that is a very hard question because it's been so long since I've seen the episodes. It's hard because I, I think that that show should have continued. I thought that it was really well done and it was too bad that it was taken off the air. But I think in the end, uh, I think Garrett Booth and Sydney would end up together. There. <laughs> See, it all worked out in the end. So and there, that's we what have they our call answer and I'm happy. Closure. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We got it today, ladies and gentlemen. Swan's Crossing closure right there for you. There you go. So, do you want to... Well, we also have to do this. Oh, my goodness. So, I have to show you something. Again, I hope you don't think I'm, like, crazy here. But um, I found this on eBay when I was looking for Swan's Crossing stuff. And I do not recall these at all. Do you? No. no. Um, but this does not look... It does not look like you. <laughs> <laughs> it looks nothing yeah, like you. Yeah, it doesn't. That's, uh, when it, yeah, when it came out, that's the first thing I said. It doesn't really look like Garrett Booth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and you found it. You found it I on did. eBay. I did. Yeah. And, and that's in the package and everything. That's, yes. Uh, Do you have one of these? What I have is uh, I have the the doll or the figure. So uh, so that that is what I have. And, you know, you collect interesting things over the years. I mean, as you as you kind of do these things. I mean, who would have ever, you know, just recently they came out with uh, uh, one for Mitchell Guzan on Airborne. Uh, and that's, I have that uh, in the package. You know, uh, a good friend of mine sent it to me. So, uh, <laughs> so I'll have to take a picture of it and text it to you. Yeah. yeah. I think it's called Pocket Mitchell or something like that. So, but that's great to, to see the Garrett Booth uh, figure. Because I, I think Swans Crossing was kind of set up to, uh, uh, it was produced by a toy company. Oh, and I think that, oh. that that was the motivation was to sell um, figures that didn't totally look like uh, like the characters. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they have those people that they, they repaint the faces and stuff? Yeah. Like, that's what they need to do. They need to yeah. make him look like... It like doesn't him. look like her. No. I, I got it. And I'm, I'm like, wait a second. That doesn't... No. And like... Oh. They did the dance party one. They should have done like the baseball one. That's my. And what else is in the what? What else is in the package? So I actually I will send this to you. You can have this. Oh, that's wonderful. So, oh, nice. yeah. um, this has a heart, a candy heart, uh, okay. and it also has a balloon. Okay. So I would You're love I would love to send this to you if if you don't have this because you have this is so cool it has like all yeah, kinds of stuff great. on the back and oh. yeah it's really and cool. actually the photo or the drawing looks a little more like me than uh, uh, the the character that is true yeah it totally does and I think the base there is a baseball one of you it's there yeah and no no I apologize it's the one of JT and I thought that was you so that was the first one I got and then I was like oh whoops I didn't read the thing that's not him <laughs> <laughs> so then I found <laughs> sometimes I do that like you know how people shouldn't like go on a Amazon oh, like, too right. much yes. like I go on eBay too much and, yeah, you do. and I'm like oh I need that no I, no, I but I needed this but I'm yeah. going to give this to you because this is amazing and well, you need to have it. So there, even though it doesn't look like you, 
but it's still you. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, yeah. Let's move on to Airborne. Yeah, please. <clears throat> so, I will say, this is where I'll tell the story. Okay. Um, when we we finally got connected, I mm-hmm. told my husband, he's super supportive, mm-hmm. and, like, he's... He's really helped us through the whole the whole podcast. Um, follow your dreams, you know, do what you got to do. <laughs> and so I was explaining to him how like this was so crazy. And I started talking to him about Airborne. Uh-huh. And he got this look on his face. And he's like, you got Mitchell from Airborne? Like he, <laughs> he like fangirled for a second because that was his favorite movie. He, and I never knew this until we started talking about having you on the podcast. So we all watched it together as a family. Um, my two kids and my, well, our kids and my husband and I, and we watched it and we've, we've watched it twice. Oh, so uh, 10 and 12 and they love it. And that's a great age for, uh, for everyone. Oh, they yeah. loved it. And then my son of course was like, I want to learn to have a rollerblade. <laughs> <laughs> and so now that's the big thing, getting rollerblades. So you've inspired rollerbladers yeah. how, however, however even many today. Years? Even today. Like yep. hey, I think it's it's great. Rollerblading is, is great. It's great. And actually that's the I would say that the majority of the people that still approach me, I mean airborne airborne I mean it's been twenty something years, if not more. Uh, and uh, the majority of the uh, people that approach me are, are guys that are around my age, uh, uh, men from 35 to 45 yeah. years old, uh, because they grew up with it and they were inspired by Mitchell Guzan and rollerblading. So the two put together uh, is great. I mean, it's 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 uh, uh, it's great. It's uh, it's nice to see, and it's nice that the next generation can g- generations uh, can yeah. get into. I mean, I'm looking forward to showing the airborne to my kids. You know, my boys are still a little too young, uh, but I can't wait until, you know, I get to get to show it to them. So. And that's it's cool. so cool because, like, you're rollerblading in it. Like, I think that's the most important thing is, like, oh, yeah. he's doing a lot of the stuff in the movie, which is so cool. Right. So I did a lot of this stuff, but I did not do the stunts. I mean, we had some <laughs> great stunt guys. I mean, shocking. I mean, I made it. I made it. There, there was a... a it was a nice, smooth transition where it looked like it was me, but Chris Edwards and, uh, you know, I mean, there's just so many great rollerblade guys, and I learned a lot from them. Uh, probably not pro- probably not the wisest thing. I think they waited till, uh, till I finished all the important scenes, and they said, Shane, you go for it. You do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really good, though, but Airborne was one of those movies, like, as a kid, or, t- uh-huh. you know, young teenager... It was on TV all the time. Yeah. Like it was on all the time. And this yeah. is when I watched it. But I watched it. It was one it. of those ones you didn't get tired of. You'd watch it right. all the time. Right. If it was on TV, that's what we'd watch. My brother and I would both watch it. And we just absolutely loved it. And you could yeah, pick up cool. like at any point in the movie and just like watch. It's really cool that you and your brother watched it together. It's probably like the only thing you guys could watch together. We do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, with siblings. Yeah. He was a year younger than me. So we would fight, fight, fight. But that was a movie that we'd watch together because it was appealing to both girls and boys. Right. It wasn't yeah. like I was trying to watch Dirty Dancing and making him watch it with yeah. me. He was like, yeah. uh, what's this? Is this gross? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we can watch it together. Way, like oh, yes. Yeah, Dirty Dancing. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, it was uh, just such a, such a good movie. Yes. yes. And oh, timeless. Right. Again, I'm going to say. And I can't wait to show it to my daughter. She is also a little young. Yeah. But when she's old enough. Yeah. I'm sure she's going to go you know, out and it. do those tricks. That's what Kevin said that him and his buddies would do. They watch airborne. Then they go try to do some tricks. The, I know that my little, I know <laughs> that Sadie gonna, won't, she won't do the trick. Oh, she won't. She fell off her bike once. Oh yeah. And ever since then, it's like, I don't want to get on a bike. I don't want to get on skates. I, I don't, don't know. Wanna... She's, she does. She's pretty, you know, she'll do stuff. So I don't <sighs> we'll know. See. I think she might. It's funny how the two are different. I got two kids. My my oldest is uh, it doesn't like to really do anything. My youngest is not scared to do anything. <laughs> I mean, he just he's not scared of anything. So, uh, uh, how old are they? Uh, two and four. Oh, oh wow! Oh, so precious. That. Mine yeah. just turned six. My one. 
Yeah. But they're fun. That's fun. Yes. And it's the two year age difference is fun. Yeah. It's it's fun. It they'll be it'll be like WWE in your living room for a little while. Because even with like I a think group, it already is. So. Oh man. <laughs> it is. I just went upstairs today and they were wrestling. Yeah. But I have a girl and but it's like they're wrestling over something and I'm like, you guys, you guys, seriously, you're gonna break stuff. And like it was a good thing I came up at that moment. Right. Break bones. I was gonna say there might have been like a broken arm or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's it's fun yeah two, two years is pretty good yeah so anyway yeah so segue back to segue back to airborne because i'd like to know if you can actually surf can you surf yeah yeah I can. that's so cool it's like real <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I started surfing in airborne it's the first time i ever went to california and surfing is very hard. Uh, it takes a long time to learn how to surf. So, uh, but I, I, I moved back to New York uh, after the film, and I, I didn't surf all that much. I mean, we would go out to Montauk every once in a while and, and go surfing, but I wasn't very good. And it wasn't until I moved back to Los Angeles, and I was in LA for three years, and I think I surfed almost every day. Wow, so, that's uh, cool. Yeah, and loved it. I miss the Pacific, and I, I miss California coast. It is beautiful. I've never been. I'll get there. You'll get there someday. I will. But you guys have a nice coast. You uh, we uh, we do have a nice coast, though. It is, but hey, you have to go southern Maine for like the nice, like oh, I'm gonna go to the beach because otherwise it's all rock. It's very rocky. Like it's all rock, and you have to like be used to cold water in order if you want to like swim. Big time. I yeah. remember uh, Long Island was was freezing. I mean, in the summer, it's cold. So, uh, so uh, yeah. Pacific was that cold. In Texas, the water is not cold. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's always. So. I hey, I wouldn't mind. That's another place we might. Texas, Florida, where we've been talking about like in the future because the main winters have just gotten too much for us. I can't do winter. No, we're just we're yeah. done with it. Okay. So, I'm good. Yeah, we're looking for we're looking for other options, outside options. We talk like we're like we're a couple, <laughs> and we're gonna move together. <laughs> but we are. But she just said the other night, she's like, I can't go anywhere. Like I can't move if you don't move. Right. I can't. Like we've been best so friends. So I was like, where we, are we moving? Yeah. Right. We've. I'll just break it to my husband. She she tried to move <laughs> once to Florida, and, and that I didn't... cried every day until she came home. <laughs> that didn't work. Yeah, it didn't quite work out. <laughs> All right. So, so it has to be together. It, yes. Yes. Our families <laughs> will will move yep. together. Yeah. <laughs> or just vacation. That's that's nice, too. When it's winter, fly down to Florida, enjoy the beautiful water, the warmth. That, yeah, that is true. I was just true. in Key West. I, I, I was in Key West for a weekend. I did the Keys, flew into Fort Lauderdale and drove through the Keys to mm. Key West. And I, it's beautiful down there. It's so, beautiful water, beautiful everything. Yeah. It really I, is. I, I wouldn't mind that. I try to get to Florida at least once a year. So, okay. There was a scene. Do you know which one I'm going to talk about? I do. Okay. The one with you and Seth Green. And and he's like modeling clothes. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> is that real? Like, did you know he was going to do that? But like, you seem to be like busting out. I didn't know if like something else was going on there. Or like, you didn't know about it or... It was funny. No, I, I, I wish I, I wish that was acting like that. No, yeah, the, uh, Rob Bowman was the director. Uh, and, uh, and Seth Green, Rob Bowman, being the good director that he is, uh, he was prepared for it. And uh, and I didn't know about it. Uh, and it was very tight. You know, it was, it was Wiley's little bedroom there was pretty tight, especially when he had cameras in there and he had a full camera crew. And at one point, they kind of set the camera up on, on me. And of course, you're sitting there with a camera in your face, and uh, and you, you know you know you're gonna have to start laughing. Uh, but Seth Green, who may be, who's just, I mean, he's he's extremely funny. I mean, every time I was around Seth, I would be laughing. Uh, he's just a uh, uh, talented, uh, uh, enjoyable person to be around. Uh, both him and Jack Black, who's another insanely talented guy, uh, kind of had a little routine set up. Uh, and they just, once it kind of started, 
it was just hysterical. I mean, they were just, well, and of course they had to be quiet. So it was almost kind of like this routine <laughs> that they were doing and they weren't able to really make any noise. But once I started laughing, I could not stop. So, and it really brought a certain amount. I mean, it was one take and we were done. And, uh, and it was, it was a great scene. I mean, and it's still to this day, I'll watch that scene and I will laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those scenes that will make you smile. Great. You know, it's, it's, it's great. So, uh, it's like when you see someone else laugh and yeah. it's like real and it was real. Laugh too. yes it was just it was it was great so that's awesome that that happened that way that's yeah. how i pictured it in my head so <laughs> no there was a lot of comedy on on set with with all those guys i mean between jack black and seth green there was just there was so much talent there uh that you were just and they were always they were always having a good time <laughs> and I mean, I just what I remember of Airborne, almost the whole shooting of Airborne was really laughing a lot. Because Seth and I spent a lot of time, because uh, we were in a lot of scenes together and, you know, kind of away from the other, other group. Uh, but, you know, Seth was just, uh, he, we, we were always, uh, he's a little bit of a prankster, so he was, he was always just doing things that were um, just a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, uh, so, I, you know, it's, it's nice to see Seth uh, uh, still still doing it so. he just um it was at comic-con i believe and there was a picture on instagram i just saw it yesterday yes. and he had somebody had drawn like an airborne oh my god it was like or like painted something yeah like a poster or yeah or... it was so cool that's cool and so he posted it and i was like oh my gosh that's so cool <laughs> it was very cool so you wore an earring in the movie. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Was that a real earring? Oh yeah. You still have it. Do you still have the? <laughs> do you still wear it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, I think. I think it was this year. Uh, it was. Uh, uh, I had an earring for a while, and it was during that period that I actually had an earring. I lived in New York, and and I was a rollerblader, and uh, uh, and uh, you know I had an earring. I had it for the film, and then I think it was maybe two years afterwards. No more earring. So, <laughs> you think I should get a new one? Yeah. yeah. Why not? Sure. Oh, YOLO. YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You sound like a mom. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> uh, that's what I've been saying lately, but you don't want to YOLO all over the place. You don't though. YOLO all over town. No, you don't want to do that. But, but I'll YOLO every once in a while. <laughs> that... That might be something you want to YOLO. Bring it back. <laughs> I YOLO that. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, here's the question, and I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it around to you. Is yeah. um, this is from the movie? Yes. If you could have lunch with any three people in the world, alive, dead, or fictitious, who would they be? Oh, so many, so many good ones. Um, well, I have to say Gandhi. Hey, that, that's a good one. Hey, you have yeah. To. So shout out to Mitchell Goosen. <laughs> Love to do that. Uh, you know, I'd like to have lunch with somebody who's alive. Jerry Seinfeld. That's a really good one. That would I mean, be funny. Yeah, funny and uh, enjoyable to and drive around in a car with him. Do we get to do that too? Yeah, that would <laughs> be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And who would be the last? The last. I would like to uh, have lunch with Picasso. Hey, yeah. lots of questions. Yeah. I would have lots of questions. Yeah. Picasso is a big influence for me as, a, as an artist. So uh, I kind of was in, I mean, it, it kind of got me into painting. So, uh, so I'd, I'd love to sit down and have coffee. So you said that he got you into painting. Did you see like a particular piece that he did or like learning about him or... Well, Picasso definitely, but I would say the, 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 the first painting I remember seeing ever was uh, Van Gogh's uh, Starry Starry Night uh, at the, I think it was at the Met uh, in New York. And uh, that was the first painting that I was, there were two things that I, I, was, I was impressed by how beautiful it was, but also how small it was. <laughs> I don't know, for whatever reason, you think these paintings are never the size that they actually are. Yeah. So you see the photos, and then you actually go and see it, like the Mona Lisa, you see it, it's, it's not that big. Uh, so, uh, but that was the, the thing that I, the painting that I think started 
you know, just connected with. Uh, but Picasso did, uh, I mean, he's, he's just so much work. And, uh, and also, he's, uh, at, at, as far as art goes, he's, uh, he draws a lot. He's a really, really wonderful drawer. Uh, he draws beautiful stuff. Uh, and I think that that is kind of the basis of his art. Uh, and then through the years, uh, when I was when I was very young, my mother had uh, my mother and father had uh, two or three Picassos um, and uh, you know frames and prints yeah. that were up on the wall. Uh, and I just remember as a young kid just being uh, 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 impressed by that. So uh, so between Picasso and uh, um, Van Gogh, those were my early inspirations to get into art. And since then, of course, so much inspiration. That's really cool. That's cool. Yeah. Those are great answers. Very, the, my answers would not be great. <laughs> I will say that. I doubt that. <laughs> YOLO. My, my, YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> they would be, I would, because like when I, like in thinking and asking you these questions and other guests that we, we ask questions, mm-hmm. I always turn it around and think, okay, like how would I feel if somebody asked me that? And I would freeze. I and I would I would say an answer and then I immediately want to take it back. I would say an answer and then at like two thirty in the morning I'd wake up in bed, I'd <laughs> sit straight up and I'd be like, "Oh my gosh, I should have said oh this." Goodness. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, my mine would be immediate. I'd want to like take it back because I say something. <laughs> Wait a minute, I want to do over. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then I do the should same I thing. Put you on the spot. Should I ask you who uh, who you would have lunch with? <laughs> Oh, no. I know who you'd have lunch with. Okay, how about you answer for me? <laughs> that'd be much better. Well, actually. Okay. I only know one. Okay. It's obvious. Who? Well, I don't know who you're going to say. You would have lunch with Joey McIntyre. Well, I would. And I would also ha- have lunch with Shane McDermott. Those are so my two. two. <laughs> Let's do it. So then that, you have one more. Those are my two. Elvis. Elvis Presley. Yes. I am. That's a good one. That was, he was a huge influence, like, I had one, I mean, we weren't like religious, like we weren't, but I had a gospel album that I got at a yard sale (laughs) that I used to play all the time. And I just loved his voice. Growing up, it was kind of like one of those things I always was missing because I really wanted to see Elvis, but that's okay. He had it all. That's the greatest thing about Elvis is that he was good looking. He was uh, talented. I mean, his voice, as you said, he had one of the most beautiful voices. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. His music was great. He was famous. He had style, too. Yes. Was, yeah. So much style. I, I finally got to go to Graceland. Yeah. Because I my work, um, I actually work out of uh, um, Memphis, Tennessee. So my my job is in Memphis, but I, I work remotely here. So I get to yeah. go down there, and I finally... It's a fun city. It is amazing. I couldn't yeah. wait to go. Like, that was... Yeah a lifelong dream to see it and just be in his it house. It really was, yeah. Like, to be in his house, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in his house, oh my word. <laughs> so, yeah. YOLO. Graceland, <laughs> check. <laughs> All right. You know, my kids haven't made it to that age yet, so I, I'm not I'm not totally in on the, uh, the the lingo yet, but I'll be there soon enough. Oh, I'm not, I'm not in on the lingo at all. <laughs> no, I, I have to ask... My kids, what what did you just say? I what, what does that, that mean? What what? Can we talk a little bit about your your artwork and your painting? I know we did a little bit, but I I mean, and I'm not just saying this because I just said I want to have lunch with you, and because I said I used to write you letters. I am being 100 percent honest. <laughs> when I saw your artwork, it is amazing, Shane. Like it is gorgeous, and. It, it, it's it's really beautiful. It, it it really is, and I had no idea. It's so different. It's it's just different. Like you have some pieces that I'm I'm looking at. It almost looks like a stained glass window. Um, it gorgeous stuff. So I didn't know if maybe you wanted to talk about that a little bit, like how you got how you got into painting and and how you've been continuing to paint. Sure, sure. I, 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 lo- I love to paint. So it's uh, one of those things that, uh, you know, once you find something you're really passionate about, uh, which turned out to be art, I mean, you know, or, or I, you may even make it a little bit larger, just beautiful things. That's why I do like the photography. I don't really do photography uh, that much. But uh, um, the painting, it started 
It started when I was when I was very young. Uh, when I moved to New York City, I went to a school called uh, Professional Children's School, uh, which was a uh, school that models and actor kids kind of go to. Uh, and uh, and there was a art teacher there, David. Uh, can't remember his last name, but he was a. You know, I took art, and you, usually you take art, and you have a teacher who's up there and she's telling you what to do. He had not, he didn't do anything like that. He would walk into class and he would just start painting. And he was an art, artist himself, and I think he was an artist, and this job was, was just a job so he could do his art. Uh, but he would come in and he would paint, and he just encouraged everybody in there to just paint and ask him questions. And so you went in and you really felt like you were in a studio. Uh, where you were free to do whatever it was. He, all he asked is that you produce some piece of art within a certain period of time. And so you kind of went in and they were playing good music and I remember watching him uh, paint. And I think that that's when I really, I started to kind of fall in love with it. Uh, but it wasn't until uh, after uh, All My Children, um, I had, uh, it was after All My Children, I moved to uh, Spain. Uh, for uh, I don't know six months. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, wow. for a long time. I was I was over there and just kind of traveling and so forth. And I was uh, living in Sevilla, uh, Spain, and uh, I just I, I, there was an artist who lived above me, and uh, we kind of started a conversation, and that was when I really started painting. So when I was over there for the three months, I did nothing but paint, um, and uh, every day I would just paint, and paint, and paint. When I came back. To New York, uh, that I, I enrolled in um, School of Visual Arts, uh, and I started studying art. And at that point, it was just it was just one of the things that I've, I've done pretty much all my life, and I just never stopped. So, uh, so well, so thank you very much. It's always nice when people uh, like the stuff that you do. I mean, it's, it's uh, well, thank you. You're very talented, and you know, I I wasn't I didn't know that. And, um, yeah, no, I, I, I had no idea. No, I didn't, I didn't know. And when I was talking to Heather, she was saying, well, you know that he paints, right? And I said, no. And so she sent me your website. Right. And I said, oh my word, like, this is amazing. I want to shout out to, to Heather and say, thank you so much for, uh, for, for having one of my prints. And I know the print she's talking about, the peacock, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just a, it, it's the stained glass. You were talking about the stained glass yes. pieces, uh, and uh, and it really looks like stained glass. Very bright, bright colors. Mm -hmm. uh, and I I love what she has. One of my prints. So uh, Heather, thank you for the question, and thank you very much for uh, having one of my prints on your wall. So so cool. Um, so do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're doing now? Besides painting and now, like in like overall or just uh, yeah. Like yeah. you talked a little bit about your family, and I mean, I know what you, you're doing, but I don't. I don't know as if the audience knows what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, my my life is. Uh, you know, it's funny how life will sneak up on you. As I said, I have the two kids. Uh, so the two boys are uh, uh, wonderful, uh, but definitely you know full time. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Uh, and I live in a I live in a wonderful town in Galveston, uh, Galveston, Texas. Uh, it is a little hot in the summers, uh, but in the winters it's lovely. It's close to the, the beach, uh, so uh, and it's kind of a, it's an old town, old town from Texas. Uh, so a lot of the houses that are here, it's a little bit like Charleston or Savannah. Uh, you know, a lot of beautiful old homes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I live in a, an old, old uh, 1914 Craftsman, which I love. Uh, love architecture and. Uh, um, and so what I do in Galveston is I, I sell real estate uh, to support my art habit. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, uh, so it's, it's a very good life. I mean, it's, uh, it's simple life, but it's good. So. Galveston, I, I'm into history. And like you said with the architecture, I mean, up here too, we have a lot of, I live in a, a home that's um, early 1800s. So um, we... Early. Early 1800s, yes. It was one of the first homes that, before Maine was even a state, it yeah. was still Massachusetts. We were still Massachusetts. So, um, <laughs> and we bought the house next door, and then we have bought the property. We're trying to, like, rehab the houses because they just, people just want to tear them down, and they just have so much personality. So I totally get it with the with the old, the old homes. Um, I love old houses. It, it, they just, these houses have so much personality, mm -hmm. and 
when people tear them down, it's like, don't do that. Just keep it up there. Put some you... put some love into it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I think it was uh, Mark Twain said that uh, houses have souls. And uh, it wasn't until I came to Galveston I started really learning about uh, the, the old houses. And once you live in them, I, I truly believe that they really they have their own personalities. Uh, and uh, you know, I've, I've rehab houses, so I've done uh, a couple different houses here in Galveston where I, I re- renovate them myself. Uh, and I love that. I mean, that's I, I think you can throw a lot of creativity into taking these old homes and making them. You, they're already kind of unique, but uh, I love bringing them back to life. Yeah. So, uh, so. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of work, though. I will say we've been working on that one for over a year and my husband's like, we're almost done. I'm like, yeah, you said that last year. So that's that's the problem. You get into it. It's just like, it never ends. Right. I mean, it's exhausting. So, and I know exactly. I mean, it's every six months I go through cycles where, you know, I just burn out. I got to quit for six months and then you start again. So, um, I should ask him about the shoes. Have you ever encountered opening a wall that has shoes in it? No, I found a lot of other stuff, but I have not found shoes, really. Yes. How old were they? Um, they were from the 1800s. They were, um, it was, well, we did some research on it, and it was something that they used to do to, like, bless the house. And okay. so the the thing is, if you take them out, you have to put your shoes back in the wall. So now our shoes are in the wall because <laughs> I'm like, we don't need any bad. They were like really little shoes. Oh, they too. were adorable. They were like these little Victorian little esque. Well, I yeah, mean, they weren't probably from the 1800s. So I would say probably they were old, dusty l- shoes. Late 1800s, early 1900s, and like probably. little because I think that people were littler. Oh, that's little, true. Like, yes. the, like the ladies, like their feet were smaller. Right. And like the, the, the little kid one was like only that big. It yeah. was just, it had a little heel on it. It was leather, but we kept those shoes, but then we had to put ours in the wall. And so Actually, that was, that's, that's always been kind of motivation for me to do these rehabs is you want to know what's in the walls. Yeah. You know, you want to know what's in there. You know, let's get into the attic and see if you can find cool stuff. So, yeah. So I love, you know, when you find shoes or, you know, even your old photos. You know, the first house I redid, um, I bought from a guy named Lewis Martin. And uh, and he, he was he was really he was really old. I actually bought it uh, bought it when he was when he was old. And very little a lot of his stuff was left there. But uh, you know, at one point we were cleaning the place out and we came across a bunch of old Galveston photos. Uh, and it's wonderful to look back through the years of the street that you're on or the house is on and see how it's changed over the years, you know, how it's changed, how, what it looked like 70, 80 years ago. That's very uh, cool. And then the folks that live there. And, uh, you know, I just, um, I love towns with rich history. And I just love, I love history. So, Hey, I guess we're friends now. He should come to Bangor. You really should. Come on I, up. I'll, come on up. We'll we, show can, you we can do lunch. Yeah, we'll hey, show you. you told me you told me about these these old houses. I'm 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 interested. Yeah, you know, it's especially with it being so hot in Texas. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, just let us know. We'll show you around. It's um Stephen King is from here, so his house oh. is one of the most gorgeous houses. It was an old lumber baron house, and okay. like it's just it's and he's made his it made it his own because there's Absolutely. like bats on the fence there's now bats on the fence. I would expect nothing less from Stephen King. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> and there is so much history here. So yeah. much history. So, selling you on Bangor. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> so we have um, five questions that we always ask our guests. Um, if you don't mind, I know we're going over a little bit. Um, no, if you have time. I'm having a great time. I mean, this is, awesome. This is cool. Cool. So we'd love to ask you these. Do you want me to start or do you want to start? Um, doesn't matter. I'll start. Oh, we didn't talk about all my children. No, we did not. Can can we talk about all my children real quick? Absolutely. So, I I have to admit, I never was able to see you on All My Children. I, I it was after the fact that I found out that you were on All My Children, and I'm like, what? How did I miss that? Um, but it was shortly after Swan's Crossing, right? That you were on All My Children, and how long were you on? No, it was it was it was it was later because uh, okay. I did. Um, Swans Crossing when I was um, 15, 16. Oh, sorry, I meant Airborne. When I was 16, and then I did All My Children maybe when I was 19. So oh, okay. Was, yeah, so it's a few, few, few years. Uh, so, uh, 
so there was a little bit of time. Did you enjoy it? Um, how long were you on? And if I could have ever kept a job, that would have been the job that I would have loved uh, the most. Uh, I was there for two years um, and made some very good friends uh, on set. Uh, I, I, and, and also, I was in New York. I was in a city I loved. So I loved being shooting in New York uh, because, you know, I grew up in New York and I just, it was, it was home for me. Uh, so being able to have a, a job that you really loved where every day, not every day because we wouldn't work every day, but we would, I would work a lot at, at least three or four times a week. I was in the studio uh, interacting and, uh, um, and you have a job, which is a great thing when you're an actor because uh, a lot of the time you don't. Uh, so uh, so in, it, was, it was great. It was on the west side. Their studios were very, very far west, like 66th Street, all the way to the west side. Um, so during the day, I would just spend a lot of time, you know, at the studio, but any break we got, just walking around the, the west side and, um, you know, it's a good neighborhood. So, you know, I felt right at home. So it was very sad the day that I no longer worked there. I'm sure my mom watched you. Oh, I'm sure she did. I, well, I played, I played the nice guy on the, on the soap, you know, and as we already talked, you want to be a Garrett Booth. You don't want to be a Scott Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm going to have to watch it now. Like, my I mom, wonder if my, you should be able to get episodes of all my children. I, I, I don't even know. I, where are you my mom from? may have the VHS. Can oh, I tell you? Oh. Real quick story. This is how much my mom loves soaps. So this, we, this VHS to DVD recorder that Nikki has in her office is actually my mom's. We, okay. we, we've borrowed. And she had tapes and tapes and tapes. Like I can't boxes and boxes of tapes of One Life to Live. Really? And that's the whole purpose for that. She converted all of her all of her tapes to DVD. That's crazy. She's a big fan of Todd Manning. Oh. Also, he's more like a Garrett Booth. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which was why the longevity. Yeah. Yeah. Well now you're gonna have to tell your mom. I'm i I'm gonna tell my mom. I'm gonna be like Hey mom, I'll show I'll show her your picture, and then she'll be like, "Oh, I'm sure, yeah." That's really cool. She'll remember. That's really cool. It is cool. Yeah. So, do you want to do the five questions that we ask? Yeah, let's do the five questions. Okay. So, do you want to start? Or do you want me to? So here's our f- the first question. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. What '80s or '90s movie have you seen at least a dozen times and would still watch again? Uh, so many. So many 80s or 90s. I give you, well, 80s. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Breakfast Club. Can I give you more than one? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Breakfast Club. I love Breakfast Club. Uh, 90s. I mean, they're great. Great 90s movies. Of course, Airborne Rocks. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, bring It On. That yes, that <laughs> but is, is that nineties? We could yeah, just call it, it that. It was like it was like late nineties, early two thousand. I, I think it was actually two thousand, but that's fine. Was, yes, we'll okay. take it because that's one. It of was our probably filmed movies. in the nineties. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so still nineties, nineties film, nineties esque. Yes. And Pulp Fiction, I think. Uh, yes. Pulp Fiction, great. I mean, just great classics. I mean, the nineties was a great time for for film. It I mean, really they're just was. wonderful movies that came out. So, so it was all over the place. It really was. I mean, it, it went was. like all kinds of crazy directions. So we got like all kinds of crazy, cool movies. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? And I'm a rewatcher of films. I will rewatch a film again and again and again. So that's like my husband. It, mm-hmm. There, are, I have my movies that I'll rewatch over and over and over again. But I'm going to tell you, like, Sometimes I'm like, how are you watching the fifth element again? <laughs> like, uh, again. But he'll say the same thing to you about dirty dancing. Probably. He'll watch that with me. Oh, he will? Yes. I can't watch the fifth element. It's like not my cup of tea. No, I can't. You know? I can't. It's okay. Sometimes you just get to sit through it. But, but yes, there are a lot of people that I've. I see now that can do that with a lot of movies. Hey, yeah. Not just not Airborne just, is one of mine. Yes. Yeah. Airborne, obviously, we can all watch a lot. I think that that's that's what it's, uh, and that's what so many people tell me. They're they're like, 
it, they would they would say that it was on, and it was on. You turn on the TV, it was on, and they would just it didn't matter where you came in, halfway through, or you know you could just watch it again and again and again. Right. Uh, and so, and it's I mean, talk about cult classic. Uh, that the film just has so much. Um, I mean, I'm amazed every time I get an email from somebody this many years and uh, from when it was filmed, and they say what an inspiration the film was to them. Uh, and there's nothing better than that. You know, a film that's, that's been around for a long time, but more importantly, it's inspired people to either rollerblade or to be better people. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know. Be nicer to people that move from out of state. I never understood that. That bothered me. From day from day one, seeing that movie to to watching it as an adult, like what's this guy do to you? Like right. he's just a nice guy. He's the new guy, and he's from California. California school. Like be like, nice to him. Yeah, he's not he's not hurting you. Right. They were just stuck in their ways and their hockey playing ways. They were jealous. Yes, they were. They were jealous because they'd never surfed because there was no water. Well, he had better hair too. That is the truth. <laughs> better <laughs> style. um okay so if you could live in any tv home which one would it be so like from a sitcom or you could even do a movie yeah i don't think that that's very hard if i if i was going to do a sitcom i'd say fresh prince hey that's a good one (laughs) that's a great one we haven't had that no we haven't if you're going to choose to live in a tv home that's the tv home you want to live in (laughs) that is right (laughs) Uncle Phil. Oh, Plus, if Will sister. Smith is there, it's even better. Yeah, yeah. that is true. <laughs> Definitely. Have you seen that video, by the way? Which this video? Is off, this is OT. But the video that he did, I think it was in Budapest. I, I could be getting this wrong. But he did the Drake. You know how there's like... And he gets up. He like climbs this ladder and he gets up on top of this roof and he's dancing. I did see that. Yeah. That's insane. I was like... No, get down. You're going to hurt yourself. I actually think I saw Mom. a video about it. Oh, really? But I haven't seen the actual video. Like he, like a video that he, where he's talking about it. But I haven't actually seen it. I'm going to look it up after this. Yeah, it's, it's pretty on, good. It's on Instagram. That's where I saw it. I follow uh, Will Smith. And he's, I mean, he's, first of all, he loves to dance. And I, I love to dance. So, uh, uh, and that's what this was all about. It was just, you know, a little video about sometimes you just got to dance. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> cool. you just got to crawl up on a roof and dance. Yeah, I might do that. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. It's YOLO. A- YOLO. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> All right. What's one thing you should know how to do by now, but you don't? Well, I, I, I could I could do a whole list. God. <laughs> uh, uh, so many. I don't know. Can it be art? Okay. It can be anything. It can be anything. Okay. Well, so for the longest time, I've been wanting to learn how to weld. <laughs> I want to do sculpture stuff. Yeah. So, uh, and I just haven't, well, I guess that's not something you should know how to do. That's okay. <laughs> it, it works. Maybe you should know well, how to do you, it, but maybe you don't maybe feel like you should know how to do it. Like for <laughs> me, it was like, I don't know how to properly bleach my whites. I don't know how to sew. So every time. Every time I try, it just doesn't work out. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. My husband can do it. I just, I don't know. I, th- I swear it's the washing machine. I can't me. fold a fitted sheet. I'll teach you. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? My turn. Yeah. Next question. All right, didn't I already just say that? I just asked one. Didn't I? No. Oh, I wait, did. it's me. Sorry. I get I'm flustered. <laughs> Um, what song? Okay, this is a good one. What song of the '80s or '90s bring? And you can do both, and you can do multiples. Um, brings back the most, me- the best memories for you, and feel free to share those memories. So when I was uh, when I was very young, one of the first songs that I ever um, that I ever uh, loved listening to over and over again was "Hey Mickey." Hey Mickey, you're so yes. Fun. You're so fun. Hey Mickey, hey Mickey. Yeah. So, uh, so and I, re- I remember, and I was I was very young. That was when I lived in Texas. Uh, in it, we would hear it at the uh, roller skating rink. You know, you'd be out on your roller skates, and uh, Hey Mickey would come on, and that was the song for me. So, <laughs> That's funny. Sadie used to call you Mickey. She did. So it was okay. So it's okay. Yeah. But I like that song too. It was good for roller skating. 
It was. It was also good for cheerleading. It was. And for dancing and for get in shape, girl. Get in shape, girl. Get out that wand. He probably doesn't know what that is. He probably doesn't know what that is. I don't know what it is. Because he... Because he was, was a, not, he was a guy. Right. He was not he like was a like, five-year-old girl in no. the mid eighties. It was like gymnastics, but like okay. it was a box you could get and you'd get this wand with like a, it was a, it was like a brand. Ribbon. Yeah. Like you'd get like the rhythm, the rhythm, uh, thing and weights. Yeah. <laughs> get in shape girl for like little girls. Yeah. Okay. I did that to that song. <laughs> Man, I thought I was going to be like an Olympic Gymnast? Rib- ribbon ribboner <laughs> i think it's like rhythm rhythmic dancing or with rith- yeah i wasn't all about the rhythm rhythmic dancing i was all about just the ribbon yeah <laughs> and, it, and actually i just thought of another song that uh was probably uh was influential in the, the 90s um crying by aerosmith that's a good one that's a good video too yeah it was a great video it was right after I had done Airborne. It was like it came out in that summer, and uh, it was young, and uh, and it, it came out. And I tell you, you know, that's the great thing about music, uh, is that it's sometimes you listen to it and it'll send you right back, mm-hmm. you know, send you to that great summer uh, that you spent in in New York, just you know, doing whatever it was we were doing. So. Oh you were gosh. YOLOing. <laughs> <laughs> it was YOLO all over New York. It was Yolo. That was the summer of YOLO. <laughs> it was. It was the solo. It was the summer of YOLO and Aerosmith. Because yep. that was that summer. He, Aerosmith was on it was like, top of. And those videos. Yeah. Amazing. I, Amazing. I wanted to be Liv Tyler. Yeah, I did. <laughs> 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 so finally uh-huh. we have um our last question okay. what motto or quote do you try to live by uh, uh lo- lola is mia the wave is mine <laughs> i stole it from i mean it's airborne's uh, 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 uh motto but it's a good one yeah so uh you know what you got to live life to the fullest every day so uh so and that's what it means to me. So every day I say, the wave is mine. That's amazing. That Isn't makes that me so awesome, happy. Dude? That was great. <laughs> you couldn't, we couldn't have planned that better. Nope. I, I thought, I thought you might say, what does that say? Man wasn't no. meant to fly. Kids were. <laughs> <laughs> no. no I, kept, I kept saying that to Kevin last night. Man wasn't meant to fly. Kids were. And he's like, was that in the movie? Yeah, yeah, that was kind of an afterthought. I think it was somebody who was trying to summarize the movie. I, I the poster, well, the poster is what it is. <laughs> hey, That's right. It's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good poster. I want to yeah, say. it's 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 good. It's good. It's so, it's uh, my only movie poster. In here, well, I've got like one. the Dream Team. I've got some some new kids on the block, and then I have Airborne. <laughs> so. <laughs> And new oh, kids on the block, I know. Yes, yeah. we are. We are pretty big new kids on the block fans. Yeah. Yeah, I talked to somebody the other day on a uh, new kids on the block um, cruise. I didn't know there was such a thing. I mean, that's this is number ten. That's this, great. Yeah, we've never. We have, this is our first time. We are right. first time okay. cruisers. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah, we're it's it's going to be fun. We're excited. Good. Good. <laughs> the, the friends that I had, uh, the, or the people that I knew that went on it, uh, they said they loved it. They had a great time. So. That's awesome. We might see them on this cruise. It will be. Yeah. It will be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely where we are big fans, and we're we're very excited to do it. But uh, it's like I said, it's it's a new experience. So yeah, it it will be, be interesting. Fun. Yeah, it'll be an experience in Yolo. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'll be yoloing all over that ship. Yes, all you will. Day. <laughs> I will be. You know I will be. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'm sad that this has come to an end, but I know. This you have no idea like this is I can't if you were to tell well how old was I? Like 10, 10 11? 10 11, yeah. Yeah. Nikki, that this was going to happen, I think I would have passed out. Probably. I would have been like, you're crazy. Yeah. 11-year-old Nikki, <laughs> when you are 
In your late 30s. Yeah. You're going to talk to Garrett Booth. I would say. You, a, I'm old. Yes. <laughs> and B, <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. It was, it's just crazy. And I really appreciate you taking a chance and, and you know, coming on our podcast and, oh, we so appreciate and hanging it. out with us because this, no, was this, great. this was great. This was, uh, it was a lot of fun. And actually, I mean, it's been, a, it's been some time since I've spoken uh, or talked about the, the, uh, the different shows. So the nice thing for me is that, you know, it's nice going back in, in the, the memories. I know I'm going to wake up at two in the morning and think about a memory that I wish I had told you guys. Hey. So, uh, you know, you wake up and you're like, oh, I should have told him that story. You know, so, uh, so no, this was, um, this was wonderful. So uh, thank you. And I uh, uh, really enjoyed it. And, uh, and if anybody is interested in uh, uh, taking a look at the artwork, uh, I have a website, um, sfmcdermottart.com. Um, and then Instagram, you know, follow me on Instagram. So yes, and we'll be posting his Instagram. We'll post um, your Instagram and your website, so that that way they can go and, and visit it easily yeah. too. We'll have it right on our website. Yes, okay. I love it. Well, guys, thank you. This was wonderful. Thank really you well. so much. Thank you so much, we Shane. Really we, appreciate it. We can't even tell you how happy we are and excited and appreciative. This is you, a dream come true. That you took <laughs> an hour and a half to talk to us. Today. Yes. Thank For you. Real. Thank you. For real. Okay. okay. Right. So thanks again. Thank we you, really Shane. appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. So, that was amazing. That was pretty crazy. Now, this happened like a little while ago. Right. Back in July. Back and in July. we've just listened to it again. Right. And... Oh my gosh. It was really great. I can't believe it happened. I'm kind of sad. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm kind of sad. That it's over? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Because it's like... I want to hang out again. Well, maybe we can. That'd be Shane. Great. That'd be crazy. If you're listening. I wonder if he's listening. I know he was listening to the actual episode today. Right. Because he emailed us. This morning and said he was. Right. Like and the, uh, like the interview part or the, not the interview, the conversation. The conversation. That's right. Because here on my so-called whatever, just so you guys know, we don't do interviews. We have conversations with friends. We do. For real. Cause like right. we're, we're not reporters. No. I'm like, not, I'm we're not, not professional journalists. No. We're with hard hitting interviews. We're just here to have a conversation and a good time. And we definitely had both of oh my those gosh. with Shane. <laughs> Like, I was, like, glowing for, like, a week and a half. Can we just say something real quick? Yeah. Just to get it, like, put this out there and make it very clear if they didn't catch it in the episode. We couldn't see him for a good chunk of time. Right. And then all of a sudden. He just popped up. It popped up on the screen. And we were like, whoa, hey. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, then I got all, and then you could hear in my voice. Like, audible. I got real, like, as. Obviously, you guys, you listened. I was super nervous. I talked really fast, kind of like I am now. We talked like we were 12 years old. Yeah, we definitely like we did. We definitely sounded like kids. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. When I was listening to it, like I felt my face getting a little red. I It was like I was cringing and smiling and laughing at the same time. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I sound so ridiculous. Why? Oh, my word. Why did I say that? But, like, that's how I felt. Like, I was like, oh, my gosh, I sound ridiculous we sound ridiculous yeah. we sound like children yeah we sound like little girls you didn't sound that way to me i thought we both sounded kind of no, foolish you did not sound foolish at all but, i but here's the thing though i didn't hold back i just acted myself right as and i it's would funny you know what i mean like that's the one thing i wanted you guys i didn't try to hold back well i did hold back a little i'm gonna be honest well i mean because honestly you would have been like <laughs> 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 I kind of did that when he called. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> I was Aiden. like, what do we do? 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 But we answer the phone because if we don't answer the phone, what if he's gone? Right. And gone forever. It's one of those things when you're waiting for that boy that you like to call you. <laughs> okay, this is weird. It sounds weird. But you know when you're in like middle school and yes. so-and-so is going to call you and he's going to call you at like 730? Yes. And you're like waiting for him to call and then the phone, that anticipation, all of a sudden the phone rings. Oh my gosh. And like and your heart like, is in your throat. I can't answer it. I can't answer it. Can you answer it? Let my mom answer it? I don't know. Who answers it? And it, I like acted like I was 12 years old. Right. No, we truly. But it's Younger. okay. It's fun. 
It was. It's fun. But listening to it, like, I was right there with you. I, my face was hot. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, my god. Like, I was texting you as I was listening to it. I hope that he doesn't think we're completely foolish. You know Probably what? He does. He, no, he doesn't. You know why? He He's was a so really sweet. good guy. He is such a good guy. He was so amazing. I couldn't even. I still can't. It was like, like I've told you, I, it's like I went in with the expectation that he was going to be nice. Right. Cordial. You know? Right. But he exceeded my expectations. He was super, super sweet. And still like super I handsome. freaking talked to Garrett Booth. Yeah, I like, freaking talk like to Shane McDermott, who like is, skyped, like I face need to, to like face. go to my parents' house and take a picture of inside my closet. Because I would write Shane McDermott. I would write like inside. I would go in. I had like a little thing, and because like my mom was super strict, my parents were super strict, and so it was like a like a rebel thing. Like I was <laughs> right. Like, I like wrote on the inside of the closet, and so Shane, I wrote He's your name there. inside the closet. Pretty sure I wrote it in Brooke's closet too, probably. Um, everything was in my closet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So a couple like takeaways yes. from this, yes, that I did not catch until I was editing it. Is that or until, until I like actually like sat down and I listened right to what he was saying? Is that when I told him about like me writing him letters and stuff like that? He was like genuinely like, where are they from? I might have it. Oh yeah. Um, what if he does? Well, I don't what? I don't think that they would get to him care of Luke Perry. They might though. I was just thinking about this. They very well may have gotten to him. Maybe. Possibly. But what would they say? Uh I don't want to know. Embarrassing, like, honestly, guys. Honestly, what would they say? I don't like, know. truly. It's kind of like the, the, the tape that I made for Joey McIntyre. I hope no one listened to that. Cause that is embarrassing. What the heck did I put on that? Right. Cause what, what would you write? What would I have written? Like, I was trying to think of that in my head. Like, what would I have written to him? Like, dear Shane, my name is Nikki. I really like you in Swan's Crossing. I love Maybe in we can be friends. I would say that. Maybe I like to play basketball. You would definitely say I that. I would have 100% said that. Like, I, I like to play basketball. I'd like you to come to my tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I probably didn't say that because that wasn't like, that, that was, was like before. Pre, yeah. That was pre-tournament. But if I would have seen him when I was 15, I definitely would have said that. But he, like, what would I have said? I don't know. Because I think about like, what would have I said? Because I definitely mailed him more than one letter. So... What else would I have had to say? Life update. <laughs> I hope not. Still living with my parents. Yeah. Going into the sixth grade. Life is hard. Yeah. Like. Got a dog. I did get a dog. Buddy. He bit me. He's mean. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy was mean, but that wasn't his fault. I think it was from the previous owners. From the, Yeah. And he just didn't trust females. He didn't like females, period. No, he didn't like me. He yeah. scared me. He scared me. Oh, my god! I was like, I thought this was supposed to get over my fear of dogs. I'm I'm even more scared of them Not now. Make it worse. <laughs> um, so I was thinking maybe I should, like, tell him what my maiden name was just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> And and you can say, P.S., I, I mean, P.S., I mean, if you feel like going through your old fan mail, mm-hmm. this is my maiden name. Oh, my gosh. Just but maybe I it. don't want him to because, like, I'm kind of nervous to figure out. But he also I, knows that we're from Bangor, Maine. That's true. So that he would true. probably look at the return address. Oh, gosh. And and see it. Right. Maybe. Be like, oh, this is a Nikki. Or I may have addressed myself as Nicole. Right. Probably Nicole. Probably Because I probably wanted to sound older. Right. Because, you know, he was older. So, <laughs> you know how that works. Uh, yes. Although, I don't, because I've always just been Brooke. Like, I don't think I would have been forward enough to be like, I want to meet you. Do you know yeah, what I no, mean? Yeah, no, I do know what you mean. Because I wouldn't be that forward. Um, but I probably would have, like, told him every everything about Bangor. Right. So that in case, in the event that he decided... To come to Bangor. Maybe he'd drive by my house. Maybe I would have made him a paper plate. Maybe. I think, I, I don't think, 
it's hard. I, I feel like maybe I still did paper plates, but they were like for special occasions. I didn't do them like all the time. Like right. I did when I, I can't remember if this was going into sixth grade or going into fifth grade. I feel like it was going into sixth grade. I feel like that too. Actually. Now, I feel like you would have probably said something along the lines of, like, you're, you're really great at acting. Yes. Like, you're, you're really good at acting. I really like your earring. I like your hair. He didn't have an earring then, though. I probably would have said I liked your hair. Yeah, you definitely would have said I like your hair. Um, you seem like a cool guy. That's what I'd always, I wrote that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that was my line. That was my pickup line. I probably said the same thing to Joe. Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Shane. Nikki's just using these pickup lines on anybody. <laughs> um, so it was so awesome. It was. It was. And um, we have since watched the Baby Sarah's Club episode, which yeah. we will post on our website. Oh my gosh! For real, I was like, I definitely had seen that episode. Oh yeah, and it was everything and more. Mm-hmm. And I remember just thinking he was so cute. Oh, yeah. And we also found commercials. We did. So we'll post those. I'm still looking for that Ethan Allen furniture commercial, though. I haven't been able to find that. We will find it. I have the um, Drug Free America one on the website. And I also have um, the stovetop stuffing one that you had sent. Yep. And you found. Oh, my God. Brooke Elizabeth. I swear to God. Like, I knew. That is him. I, I knew, I knew, I knew, I always recognized him from a Babysitter's Club book cover. I knew it. I knew it. And so I went looking and I found it. So we're going to post that too. And we need to find other books that he was a cover on. I know. So you guys go look. Like think about the books that was around that era. Right. So like Sweet Valley High. Could have been like Arl Stein. Right. Like, I don't, I don't even know. Because all I read was Babysitter's Club. I feel like. Okay, so you know how you said there was a Baby Search Club book? Yes. I feel like there's like an R.L. Stein book, or not R.L. Stein. What was like that one that was like a little bit more mature than R.L. Stein? I don't know. But like, you guys know what I'm talking about. Some of you out there listening know what I'm talking about. Right. And I feel like he was on the cover, and I bought it because I was like, oh my gosh, that looks like Shane McDermott. Yeah. And then like, he became the character. Yes. I didn't write any fanfics, but I did find some Swans Crossing fanfiction. Um, <laughs> I think I may have found some Swans Crossing fanfiction. Oh, my. Oh, my, my. Oh, my, my. I wanted to um, explore the Swans Crossing web ring, but uh, those sites have since died. <laughs> so I was not able to do that. Yeah. But that was um, a while also, ago. I said Brittany Daniels, and I I meant Brittany Daniel. I actually, before I said Brittany Daniel, I said Brittany Murphy. But True I that. but I edited that out because <laughs> I sounded ridiculous. <laughs> and yeah. Also, Shane, let's do lunch. What? <laughs> like what? 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 W- what? Maybe he was just saying that to be nice, though. What if we we're in Galveston? No, when I was talking about my lunch, like the people that I would have lunch with, I said he would be one of them. Oh, yeah. Even if he wasn't on that episode, I would have said him. But I felt like kind of geeked out, like saying it would be him, but it would be him. Like 100%. But he would totally have lunch with you or and or us if we were in Galveston. Are we supposed to say that where he is? Oh, yeah. It's on this website. Yeah. And he talks about Galveston. He does. In the pot. In, in the, the beautiful episode. architecture. architecture. Um, or if he was in Maine, he would have um, lunch with us. I'm wait. Come on up to Bangor. Come up to Ma- fall is a beautiful time. Just don't come during the cruise. Uh, yeah, just let me know so I can like prepare it myself in advance. But the the foliage is gorgeous. Yes, it is. We'll take a we'll take a little scenic drive to in, Acadia in your National car. Park in my car. <laughs> you will I'll, drive. I'll clean it out. And you'll special. drive. I will drive. You'll be safe. And that'd be so fun. It's a date. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. <laughs> we are planning things. And we'll go have lobster on the coast. We've got it all planned out. Yep. All set. All you gotta oh do is my gosh. show up. It 
like the, the the whole conversation and I and we talked about this because I talked about it in the Facebook group. I talked about it with you. The whole conversation was like more than I could have ever hoped for. Yeah. I mean, I was, was geeked cool. out and like, yeah, because you guys like it's one thing to like talk to. I don't know, somebody you admire from afar, like like Michael Jordan or Larry Bird for me. Yeah. I'd be kind of geeked out, but I know this sounds really, but like Shay McDermott was like. Right. Is this really happening? Is this really my life right now? Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't have gotten that geeked out with Larry Bird or Michael Jordan. No, I mean, it's cool. But I like them. Right. Of like, course. I love but it's them. Di- but it's a little different. It was. Because- like, you didn't like picture marrying Larry no. Bird or Michael Jordan. No. Is that okay if I say that? Is that weird? I kept saying that because, like, I was kind of going borderline weird. You guys probably heard it. But, like, I don't honestly, think you were. I was thinking to myself, how would, like, other people act in that situation? I feel like a lot of people would be similar. Yes. I really uh, no, do. Absolutely. Because, like, you, hindsight's twenty twenty. So you could say, oh, I wouldn't say that. or, But, like, I said some stupid stuff that I took out. I said some really stupid stuff. <laughs> I just took it out because it, I was stupid, you guys. Like, I was stupid. I said some stupid stuff. Like, what? I don't remember you sounding stupid. I'm going to take this out right here. Yeah. But he was talking about all my children, and he was talking about Scott Chandler. And I said, who's Scott Chandler? You guys keep talking about Scott Chandler. Who's Scott Chandler? Huh. Yeah, that's right. You did say that. <laughs> you should leave that in. <laughs> that's funny. I felt so stupid. It's okay. Because I was like, oh my God, he was Scott Chandler. But I did admit to him in the beginning that I had never watched All My Children. Correct. You did. But guess what I found? All my children. Yes, I did. <laughs> and guess what I'm going to be watching? All my children. That's right. I don't know who Scott Chandler is. With Scott Chandler. Hells yes. So I am so sorry, Shane. I will keep this in. I am so sorry that I was so dumb. Take off that part where I made that noise I to will. flag it. I will. I will. Okay, cool. I will. Maybe I'll leave it in because it's funny. I lifted it in the last one. Did you Did you hear it? Nope. Well, I'll definitely lift it in. Did you hear all of the dolphins? Yes, I did. I loved doing that. That was fun. I can't do a dolphin sound. It's a very, I don't think, I think it's very hard. I'm dolphins sure freak me out. It, yeah, we've had this conversation. Yes, we have. Like dolphins. They, they do freak me out. Sometimes. You guys. Weird. Um. So anyway. Yeah, so um, I found some pictures like on the internet from like Bop and stuff like that. Uh-huh. I was thinking just putting them up in a gallery. Yeah. You think that's okay? Because, like, they're cool. not owned by that person that posted them. It's, like, kind of a hard... I think it's they were fine. They like, eBay photos. Yeah, no, I think it's absolutely fine. If somebody, like, wants me to take it down, I'll take it down. I've been looking for his modeling photos, like, his eyes on modeling me photos. Me, too. I can't find so, them. And not, like... let's be honest. He's handsome. He's very handsome. Let's just be honest. He's very handsome. Like... He's a very handsome man. Yes. Like, really? Yeah, I know. When I... That again, when that came up, when that thing popped up, I was up. like, I almost said, "Oh shit!" Like you can hear it in my voice. I was like, "Oh my god, there he is!" There. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. You didn't sound crazy. I felt crazy the entire time. Like I felt like it was really good. I just it can't really believe good. it happened. I know it was awesome. We love you, Shane. Can we be friends? <laughs> I think we are kind of friends. <laughs> I mean, forever friends. Is what we are. Yep. We haven't sang this in a long time. No, we haven't. Forever friends. Should we record it and put it on iTunes? (laughs) Make it an EP. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Forever friends. I broke a key. No, because it's not extended. Wait. Yeah, no, it's E. E was the short one. Right. Forever Friends, the single. The, the tape single. The t- <laughs> <laughs> Forever oh Friends, the hits. <laughs> the hits. There would be no songs on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys. Um, 
Yeah, and make sure I am excited to order my print. I have not ordered it yet, mm. but I will be ordering it um, from sfmcdermotart.com. Um, yes, I will have a piece of Shane McDermott's art in my house. And we will link his website Maybe on two. our website. Maybe two. One in my office and one like as the focus piece. And people will say, like in the living who room? did that? And I'll say, Shane McDermott, my Garrett friend. Booth. Don't, <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> so, so thanks, guys. Thank we you. really appreciate you listening. And this was a ju- definitely like a great experience to have a dream have come had. true. It really was. It was awesome. Um, and I guess I'll also like segue into I just um, thank you for all the messages and stuff that you've been sending. I don't know what else to say. And it's on the up and up. It is, you know, every day is a new day. Right. That's what I keep saying. I mean, there's, I'm still gonna, you know, there's been bad days and good days, but thank you for being supportive about me sharing that with you guys. I just felt like it was time for you guys to know what was going on and that it is going to be a challenge. It's going to be, it's a journey and... But, like, everything's okay. Like, you're okay. Yeah. 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 I am interested, once I start feeling better, to, like, make some message boards. Yes! (laughs) Because I want them so bad. I'm excited about that. And people had had tweeted. They were like, yes! Yep. Message boards would be awesome. So, so yeah. I'd be down. I just can't make them. (laughs) Also, I have, like, a bunch of, of, um, of outtakes that i had already edited i literally just need to upload them so i'm gonna be doing that when i like feel on patreon right yeah cool but if they're like out of order or whatever you guys like it's just is what it is just is what it is i think that's fine i don't want to get too like anxious about it so so anyway yeah send us those book covers if you see shane yes and if you find like old like print advertisements we want to see it because we've been looking and we have come up with nothing. What would I eat for lunch with Shane McDermott? Nothing. I'll have a water, please. I, well, nope, if we nope. went to the coast. I'd be real. I'd be real. I'd be like. I need a lobster roll. I need a lobster because like you're going to get messy anyway. I w- Here's butter dripping down my chin. <laughs> oh my gosh. Embarrassing. Why are you going to get messy anyway? Because it's lobster. You get messy. Dwan. 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 She said she was going to bring those on the cruise. Shamwows. <laughs> It'd be good for sweat. It would be good for sweat. That's what I'm talking about. Give me one of those shamwows. Um, I'll fashion it into a sweatband. Yes! That's what I need to do. I'll oh make one gosh. for my back. Yes. And one for my, like, lower back. I need back. one for my whole head. How about I, can I just make a shirt out of a shamwow? Mm, probably. Like, you'd have to stitch shamwows together. Oh, that would be difficult. I think I should just stick to... Maybe Jerusha could do it for us. Oh. I bet she could. Shamwow shirt. I would wear it. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine? And then if somebody, like, spills something, all you have to do is, like, throw yourself on it. (laughs) Hold up. Hold on. I can clean that up. (laughs) So. All right. So, anyway. Oh, also, Shane's birthday, because I was just looking... We were, I was looking at like previous posts and I like, we had said happy birthday on Twitter. Yeah. Um, it's the same day as new kids on the block day, April 24th. Hey, <laughs> worlds collide. <laughs> so that's cool. I know that's wicked random, but it's random. So yeah, this is it. And, um, thank you so much, Shane, for that episode. That was fantastic. We appreciate you. We absolutely loved it. And um, thank you to all our Patreon peeps. You guys are amazing. Um, You help us do what we do. And we couldn't do it without you. And if you want to become a Patreon, we will be sending out bracelets again soon. Soon. Um, This this month, I hope you guys understand this month might be a little bit delayed. Um, next month might be a little bit delayed, but we'll get them out to you. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Exciting. Yeah. So you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thanks again for everything. And we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. All right. Bye. Bye.